By now, we're all familiar with the CNN piece written by Andrew Kaczynski, known less for actually finding the alleged original poster of the meme heard round the world, the fictional image of a fictional fight that somehow represents real incitement to violence, and known more for one line threatening to reveal his information publicly if he does not fulfill the terms of his CNN-supervised online probation. And people are right to take issue with that implied threat. CNN is neither law enforcement nor cultural police. There are varying perspectives about the proper role of media in a functioning democratic society, but I've never heard anyone make the argument that role should include policing the non-criminal behavior of private citizens or coercing them into behaving the way the media wants them to behave. Quality journalism typically aims to give you the facts that you need to think and to judge for yourself. CNN apparently wants to do the thinking and judging for you under implied threat to punish you publicly should you not conform. That's not real news. That's not fake news. That's not news at all. It's just bullying. But the beauty of this story, or the ugliness, depending on how you'd like to look at it, are the many layers of stupidity within it. And there's one layer of stupidity in particular that I've been thinking about. This was an ethical breach by CNN, no doubt. But it's a stunning intellectual failure, too. Just for the purpose of understanding all the stupid layers in this viral piece, let's take it purely on its reasoning. Let's say CNN never made that implied threat. Let's say CNN sought the origin of this meme for purely intellectual and not spiteful personal reasons. Let's follow their actual reasoning and take their argument at its highest. When we do, we arrive at a very strange question I'd like you to consider seriously. If a racist makes you a sandwich, is it okay to eat it? Hold that thought and let's see how we get there. If we're going to assume CNN uncovered the alleged original poster of this meme for analytical reasons, we have to assume that fact would have some analytical value. Why would the origin of the meme have analytical value? That's the question CNN addresses in the video segment that corresponds to the Andrew Kaczynski article right at the top of the clip. Jim, the White House will not say where the president got the video, but a senior White House official said today it was not from Reddit, which is a popular internet messaging board. The problem is we and other media outlets who have searched can't find any evidence of it existing anywhere but Reddit before the president picked it up. Now, why does that matter? Because if he got it from that source, a whole bunch of new questions about racism, bigotry, and violence come into play. So let's be clear about the reasoning here. The questions of racism, bigotry, and violence come into play because the source of the material is allegedly racist, bigoted, and violent, not the material itself. So even though CNN tacitly concedes that the meme Trump shared is not itself racist or bigoted, they are saying that the source of the meme may be racist or bigoted on other topics, and that fact alone raises important questions. CNN continues. The video shared by President Trump to his 33 million personal Twitter followers and then to 19 million more on his presidential account was apparently first posted by a Reddit user who goes by this online name. Wow, I never expected my meme to be retweeted by the God Emperor himself. I am honored. But others are worried, including the Anti-Defamation League, which surveyed the user's post and found a consistent record of racism, anti-Semitism, and bigotry. This individual traffics in online hatred and at times violent rhetoric. And the ADL seems to call out the president saying, when those on the fringes of society feel their messaging is getting mainstream attention, that should raise alarms. Okay, let's follow the reasoning. If an otherwise non-racist or non-bigoted product comes from a person who may be tangentially racist or tangentially bigoted, then simply the use of that product should raise alarms. In other words, if you use or share something that isn't racist, but it's from a racist person, then you are behaving immorally. Think about that standard. And that's why I ask, if a racist makes you a sandwich, is it okay to eat it? If I go to McDonald's after I'm done recording this video and I order a Big Mac and the guy who makes it for me says racist things in his time outside of work, am I behaving immorally? 
in that scenario? Am I behaving immorally by enjoying a Big Mac? just because a racist made it? Should I have vetted the maker of the Big Mac first? Or maybe the McDonald's worker isn't racist, but let's say the cattle rancher who supplied the beef is. Or maybe he's not racist, but let's say the guy who helped him irrigate his land is. Or maybe irrigation guy isn't racist, but let's say the legislator who wrote the irrigation law is. Or maybe the legislator isn't racist, but his constituency is. You can see how this thinking leads to nonsense. It's a never ending game of six degrees of Kevin Bay KKK Taken. If all things that can be tangentially connected to racism are bad, there is nothing left that's good. The point is this, the standard CNN is applying to this scenario is socially unworkable. The extent of their reasoning is every person must be vetted for ideological purity before we interact or associate or exchange with them. That is both impossibly impractical and entirely unnecessary. If I go to McDonald's for a hamburger and a Republican makes it, that doesn't mean it's a Republican hamburger or that I'm a Republican for eating it. If I go to Reddit for a meme and a racist makes it, that doesn't mean the meme is racist or that I'm a racist for laughing at it. And if we were to grant this standard, we would create an infinite intellectual rabbit hole to which there is no bottom, wasting everyone's time instead of being more productive, making more dank and spicy burgers and more dank and spicy memes. But worst of all, this is a standard that ironically invalidates itself using its own reasoning at least as delivered by CNN. Anything that comes from potentially racist people is presumed to be invalid. Fine, well, CNN is facing a lawsuit claiming racial discrimination in evaluating its employees. Therefore, the source of the reporting is, at some level, potentially racist. Therefore, this reporting, though not racist itself, has racist origins, raising many questions and alarms and should be dismissed for lack of purity. It's obvious this logic is unworkable. If every Everything a racist has ever touched is bad, then there is nothing good left in the world, including CNN itself. And that is how we know there is nothing principled about this reporting. You don't start with this bizarre principle that everything a racist has ever touched is bad, so we have to figure out if a racist ever touched this obviously not racist meme. This reporting starts with someone saying, Hey, that guy who posted that meme really made us a laughing stock. Why don't you go dig up some dirt on him and see what you can find? Oh, he made some racist jokes on the internet. Cool. That'll work. That'll work because the goal of this reporting isn't truth seeking. The goal of this reporting is vengeance and punishment through any means available. I've really tried to be fair with CNN in this ongoing dogpile. They've made their mistakes, some worse than others, and I've tried to judge them on a case-by-case -case basis, leveling criticism against them only when it is substantiated and giving them the benefit of the doubt otherwise. However, this is the story that changes that approach for me. This is the basis on which I revoke that benefit. This story is a massive failure of intellectual and ethical judgment. A story written by scumbags on a personal power trip, disguised as a principled stance that they clearly have not thought through. In so doing, CNN has insulted both our privacy and our intelligence and shown they have no interest in giving you information to help you understand the world. Instead, they'd like to control how you understand the world. Luckily, they don't have that control, but they don't understand that fact for the same reason they don't understand memes, because they don't understand the internet. Amid the free flow of information, there are no gatekeepers, nobody to tell us what's true and what's false, nobody to tell us what memes are funny and what memes aren't. When information flows freely, we will decide those things for ourselves. So don't hold any delusions about power in this scenario, CNN. You don't have any. We all do. And the best ideas do. And the dankest memes do. Through open competition, not through iron fists. And you, CNN, like anyone else, are welcome to compete on those terms. If you'd like fair treatment from me and others, you can do exactly what you coerced from Han Asshole Solo. You can show your remorse by saying you will not repeat this ugly behavior again. And you can issue a statement 
saying your behavior should serve as an example to others not to do the same. Otherwise, we reserve the right to push you further down the ratings than you've already slid. Down below Full House and Friends reruns on Nick at Night, a right which we will happily exercise. Until then, until you commit to reforming your bad behavior, you will get a presumption of malice from me and many others, and you can just stop writing and start digging instead. It'll get the grave finished quicker at a fraction of the cost. And if it helps, if budgets are tight, I will happily donate my personal shovel to the effort. And just to be clear, CNN, no, I don't mean the shovel will be used as a weapon. And no, as far as I know, there weren't any racists involved in its manufacturing or sale. So don't bother investigating. Thanks, as always, for listening and for supporting this channel. Always appreciate that thoughtful discussion down below and especially over on Twitter. That is at ML Christensen. You're always welcome to come hang out and chat in my live streams. Those are linked down in the description. Looking forward to it. Okay, bye.